हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल जर्नी विथ विजय कुमार श्रीवास्तव टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट द टॉपिक इन्वायरमेंटल लॉज एंड प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट बिफोर प्रेजेंटेशन लिटिल इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट माय सेल्फ आई एम विजय कुमार श्रीवास्तव आई हैव डन एम एस एग्रीकल्चर विथ स्पेशलाइज इन एग्रोनॉमी फ्रॉम जी पंत यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड टेक्नोलॉजी पंतनगर इन नाइनटीन एंड प्रेजेंटली वर्किंग एज अ सीड प्रोफेशनल इन वन ऑफ द एम एसोसिएटेड विथ सीड्स एंड पेस्टिसाइड इंडस्ट्री सो लेट्स प्रोसीड टू द प्रेजेंटेशन वाट इज इन्वायरमेंटल लॉ इन्वायरमेंटल लॉ इज ए कलेक्टिव टर्म इकम्पेसिंग एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द लॉ दैट प्रोवाइड प्रोटेक्शन टू द इन्वायरमेंट ए रिलेटेड बट डिस्टिंग सेट ऑफ रेगुलेटरी रिजिम्स नाउ स्ट्रॉगली इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाय इन्वायरमेंटल लीगल प्रिंसिपल फोकस ऑन द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ स्पेसिफिक नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज सच एज फॉरेस्ट मिनरल्स वाइल्ड लाइफ और फिशरीज Environmental laws, major legislations directly dealing with the protection of environment in India are first the Environment Protection Act 1986, second the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981, third the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974, fourth the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, fifth the Forest Conservation Act 1980, sixth the Public Liability Insurance Act 1991. and seventh the national environment tribunal act 1995 now to study the environment protection act the environment protection act 1986 was constituted on 19th november 1986 to provide protection and improvement of environment and for matters connected with environment the spirit of proclamation adopted by the united nations conference on human environment held in stockholm in june 1972 was implemented by the government of india by creating this act there are four main chapters and different clauses under various chapters which lay down the standards policies and act of environmental degradation and policies for improvement of environment and prevention of human beings from environmental hazards here to discuss the chapters related to environment protection act chapter 1 describes the definitions of various entities that are related to environment chapter 2 describes the role of central government to take measures for environment protection and its improvement along with the economic development it includes the appointment of officers power to give directions rules to regulate environmental pollution laying down procedures and standards for industrial wastes emissions and hazardous wastes Chapter 3 deals with the prevention control and abatement of environmental pollution as per the guidelines a person running an industry or operation cannot emit or discharge environmental pollutants in excess of the permissible limit central government or its officers may take samples of air water soils or other substances from any factory for the purpose of analysis and upon failure to satisfy the norms shall liable to be proceeded against and punished accordingly there will be penalty imprisonment of 5 years with a fine up to 1 lakh rupees or it extends to 5000 rupees every day now chapter 4 it lists miscellaneous clauses which are not pertaining to environment but are guidelines for functioning and conduct of officers and government representatives and these guidelines must be laid before parliament for its validity now to study the air prevention and control of pollution act the air prevention and control of pollution act 1981 is a control of the un conference on human environment held on june 1972 a steps were taken to prevent all natural amenities and with this in view this act has been enacted in 1981 it consists of seven chapters and 54 sections the chapter 1 this chapter defines the following terms such as air pollutant air pollution approved fuel automobile chimney emission control equipments etc now chapter 2 it deals with the information regarding cpcb and spcb their constitutions terms and conditions of service of members delegation of powers to various officials chapter 3 this chapter emphasizes the functions of central board and state board such as to collect compile and publish the data regarding air pollution 
एंड टू गाइड द कंसर्न इंडस्ट्री फॉर द इफेक्टिव प्रिवेंशन एंड कंट्रोल ऑफ एयर पोल्यूशन नौ चैप्टर फोर्थ ऑफ द एयर पोल्यूशन एक्ट दिस डील्स विथ प्रिवेंशन एंड कंट्रोल ऑफ एयर पोल्यूशन द बोर्ड्स आर ऑथोराइज टू डिक्लेयर द एयर पोल्यूशन कंट्रोल एरियाज इंस्ट्रक्ट रिगार्डिंग द इमिशन स्टैंडर्ड्स फ्रॉम ऑटोमोबाइल्स एंड रेस्ट्रिक्ट द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ सर्टन इंडस्ट्रीज अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस चैप्टर द इंडस्ट्रियल पीपुल आर नॉट परमिटेड टू अलाउ एक्सेस पोल्यूटेंट्स विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू स्टैंडर्ड्स एंड इन सच केसेज द बोर्ड हैज़ द पावर टू इंटर इंस्पेक्ट एंड कलेक्ट सैंपल्स फाइंड आउट द रिपोर्ट्स इन द स्टेट लेबोरेटरीज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द रिपोर्ट अपील कैन बी मेड एंड द पर्सन मे बी पनिश्ड नाउ चैप्टर फिफ्थ दिस चैप्टर डील्स विद द फंड अकाउंट्स एंड ऑडिटिंग ऑफ द सेंट्रल एंड स्टेट बोर्ड्स नाउ चैप्टर सिक्स If the industry or person fails to follow the standards they will be punished and punishment will be like imprisonment for not less than 1 year and 6 months it may extend to 6 year and with fine now chapter 7 it deals with the power to amend the schedules the necessity of a state board to maintain a register containing relevant particulars and about the power of central and the state government to make rules regarding the air pollution control here to study the water prevention and control of pollution act the water prevention and control of pollution act 1974 the water act was enacted by parliament act 1974 purpose to provide for the prevention of control of water pollution and the maintaining or restoring of wholesomeness of water as on day it is applicable in all the states of india This act consists of eight chapters and sixty-four sections. Chapter one. This chapter explains the terms such as board, central, state board, member, outlet, sewer, sewage effluents, trade effluents, stream, and pollution. Now, chapter second. It elaborates about the constitution of central board, state board committees, terms and condition of service of members, meeting of the boards. it also explains about delegation of power to chairman member secretary officers and other employees of the board now chapter 3 of the water prevention and control act it deals with the constitution composition and the special provisions of joint board like example a joint board for the river kaveri includes officials from karnataka tamil nadu and pondicherry along with the central board officials now chapter 4 This chapter deals with the functions of a state board, central board, and their powers to give directions to concerned authorities. Now, chapter fifth, it explains the power of a state government to collect samples of effluents, analyze in government laboratory, and publish the results. On the basis of the result, they may restrict the outlets and discharge into a stream or well. Now, chapter sixth. it deals with the maintenance of funds of central and state board budgets annual report submission account and auditing now chapter 7th of the water prevention and control pollution act this elaborates about the penalty in case of offences committed by companies and the punishment imprisonment for not less than 1 year and 6 months but which may extended to 6 years with fine in case of failure an additional fine of Five thousand rupees will be imposed for every day. In such case, the names of the offenders may be even published. Now, Chapter Eighth, it explains about the central and state water laboratories, analysts, reports of the analysts, protection, actions in good faith, and about the power of central and state government to formulate the rules. Important sanctions under this Act are nineteen, twenty-one, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Thirty-three, thirty-three A, forty-three, forty-three, forty-five, and forty-five A. Now to study the Wildlife Protection Act. The Wildlife Protection Act, nineteen seventy-two. This act is framed for the protection of wild animals, birds, and plants. This act comprises seven chapters and sixty-six sections. This act extends whole of India except Jammu and Kashmir. Chapter one. it deals with the definitions of terms such as habitat hunting national park reserved forests sanctuary etc now chapter second it clearly explains the authorities to be appointed formation of wildlife advisory board and its duties 
नाउ चैप्टर थर्ड इट इम्फेसाइजेज द मेंटेनेंस ऑफ रिकॉर्ड ऑफ वाइल्ड एनिमल्स किल्ड और कैप्चर्ड डिटेल्स रिगार्डिंग हंटिंग ऑफ वाइल्ड एनिमल्स एंड रिगार्डिंग द लाइसेंस होल्डर्स आर एलिबोरेटेड नाउ चैप्टर फोर्थ ऑफ द वाइल्ड प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट इट गिव्स ए नोट्स ऑन सेंक्चुरीज नेशनल पार्क गेम रिजर्व परमिशन टू इंटर ए सेंक्चुरी प्रोहिबिटेड एरियाज डिस्ट्रिक्ट कलेक्टर्स पावर इन मेंटेनिंग दीज एरियाज एंड ऑल्सो इंक्लूड्स द पावर ऑफ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट टू डिक्लेयर सच एरियाज एज नेशनल पार्क एंड सेंक्चुरीज नाउ चैप्टर फिफ्थ इट टेल्स अबाउट द ट्रेड ऑफ वाइल्ड एनिमल्स एनिमल प्रोडक्ट्स एट्सेट्रा दिस चैप्टर क्लियरली एक्सप्लेन्स दैट एनी एनिमल किल्ड कैप्चर्ड और ट्रेफ्ट इज ए गवर्नमेंट प्रॉपर्टी एंड ऑल्सो एलिबरेट्स रिगार्डिंग द रेगुलेशन ऑफ ट्रांसफर ऑफ एनिमल नाउ चैप्टर सिक्स दिस चैप्टर एक्सप्लेन्स अबाउट द पेनाल्टीज वेन फाउंड गिल्टी अंडर दिस एक्ट टू ईयर्स इम्प्रिजनमेंट रुपीज टू थाउजेंड रुपीज फाइन आइदर और बोथ एंड इन ए सेंक्चुरी और एनिमल पार्क वेन एन ऑफेंस इज कमिटेड इम्प्रिजनमेंट फॉर मैक्सिमम सिक्स ईयर्स एंड मिनिमम सिक्स मंथ्स एंड फाइन नॉट लेस देन फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज विल बी लेविड नाउ चैप्टर सेवन्थ इट डील्स विथ प्रोटेक्शन गिवन टू ऑफिसर्स फॉर एक्शन टेकन इन गुड फेथ एंड एक्सप्लेन्स द पावर प्रोवाइडेड टू सेंट्रल एंड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट मेक टू रूल्स रिगार्डिंग द प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ वाइल्ड लाइफ द वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू रिफर्स टू ए स्वीपिंग पैकेज ऑफ लेजिस्लेशन इनेक्टेड इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू बाई द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया बिफोर नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू इंडिया वनली हैड फाइव डिजिग्नेटेड नेशनल पार्कस अमॉन्ग अदर रिफॉर्म्स द एक्ट स्टेब्लिश शेड्यूल ऑफ प्रोटेक्टेड प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल स्पीसीज हंटिंग और हार्वेस्टिंग दिज स्पीसीज वॉज लार्जली आउट लाउड द एक्ट प्रोवाइड्स फॉर द प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ वाइल्ड एनिमल्स बर्ड्स एंड प्लांट्स एंड फॉर मैटर्स कनेक्टेड देयर विथ और एंसिलरी और इंसिडेंटल देयर टू इट एक्सटेंड्स टू द होल ऑफ इंडिया एक्सेप्ट द स्टेट ऑफ जम्मू एंड काश्मीर विच हैज इट्स ऑन वाइल्ड लाइफ एक्ट द वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट हैज सिक्स शेड्यूल्स विच गिव वेरिंग डिग्रीज ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन शेड्यूल वन एंड पार्ट सेकेंड ऑफ शेड्यूल सेकेंड प्रोवाइड एब्सोल्यूट प्रोटेक्शन ऑफेंसेज अंडर दीज आर प्रिस्क्राइब द हाइएस्ट पेनाल्टीज स्पेसिज लिस्टेड इन शेड्यूल थर्ड एंड शेड्यूल फोर आर ऑल्सो प्रोटेक्टेड बट द पेनाल्टीज आर मच लोअर शेड्यूल फिफ्थ इंक्लूड्स द एनिमल्स विच मे बी हंटेड एंड द प्लांट्स इन शेड्यूल सिक्स आर प्रोविटेड फ्रॉम कल्टिवेशन एंड प्लांटिंग द हंटिंग to the enforcement authorities have the power to compound offences under this schedule like they can impose fines on the offenders government of india enacted a comprehensive legislation wildlife protection act of 1972 with the objective of effectively controlling poaching and illegal trade in wildlife and its derivatives this has been amended and signed in january 2003 and punishment and penalty for offences under the act have been made more stringent now to study forest conservation act 1980 earlier the indian forest act 1927 was adopted to include reserved forest village forest protected forest and non government forest this act regulated and duty levied on timber and other forest producers but this act does not into consideration about conservation protection of forests in addition this act does not consider or include the tribals who are the most conservators and protectors of forest hence the forest conservation act 1980 was adopted this forest conservation act 1980 has different sections to deal with the various concepts related to conservation of forests First this act has the main aim to protect all types of forest second thus indirectly help to maintain the ecosystem and biological diversity third this act stresses that the state government would be empowered to declare as a reserve forest is unreserved and any forest land cannot be used for non forest purpose like any purpose other than a forestation fourth this act further checks the operations that must be carried out in forest such as mining which will cause ecological imbalance leading to environmental deterioration fifth according to this act the central government has the authority to maintain an ecological balance in the forest extending from the tropical to temperate regions now sixth 
This act was enacted and strictly followed on the basis of the fact that forest is a valuable treasure. Forest is defined as an ecosystem in which trees are dominant form of vegetation, the plants, animals, and the soil plays an important role. Certain conditions are stipulated at the time of granting approval under Forest Conservation Acts are first compensatory afforestation, second catchment area treatment, third phased reclamation of mining area, fourth safety zone area, and fifth rehabilitation of project affected families if any, sixth muck disposal plan, and seventh wildlife management plan etc. What are the impacts of Forest Conservation Act? First, during 1950-80, the rate of diversion of forest land for non-forestry purpose was 1,50,000 hectares area per annum. After enactment of the Act in 1980, the rate of diversion of forest land for non-forestry purpose came down to about 35,000 hectares per annum. Now to study the Public Liability Insurance Act 1991. This act provides mandatory insurance for the purpose of providing immediate relief to the persons affected by accidents occurring while handling any hazardous substance. Next, the National Environmental Tribunal Act 1995 seeks to constitute a tribunal with benches to award compensation for damage to persons, property, and the environment arising out of any activity involving hazardous substances. All these acts are amended from time to time to rationalize and expand their scope, coverage, and penal provisions. This was all about Environmental Laws and Protection Act. Now my presentation ends here. Hope this presentation will be very very useful to all of you. I have given here my YouTube channel details, Journey with Vijay Kumar Srivastava. Having request, please visit the channel, subscribe it and provide your kind and valuable feedback for further improvements in next presentations. Thank you.